This lesson will show how to use the TVM solver, or time value of money solver, to solve compound interest problems. The information entered into the TVM solver is sometimes different than the information that we use when using the compound interest formula shown here in the lower left hand corner. Using the solver, PV is equal to the present value, which is the same as the principal in the compound interest formula, except we use a negative value for the present value in the solver, and in the formula, we use a positive value for P. We use a negative value in the TVM solver because we have to pay this amount or deposit this amount into the account in order to open the investment account. Capital N is the number of compounding periods, and this is the total number of compounding periods, which is not the same as lowercase n in the compound interest formula. In the formula, lowercase n or small n is the number of compounding periods per year, in the solver, capital N is the total number of compounding periods, and therefore capital N is equal to little n times t, where t is the time in years. Using the solver, the payment will always be zero when solving compound or interest problems because we have one initial deposit and no regular payments. I percent is the annual interest rate as a percent, so this is the same as R in the compound or interest formula, except in the formula R is expressed as a decimal, in the solver, I is expressed as a percent. FV represents the future value, which is the same as A, the amount after time T in the compound interest formula. And then finally, the number of compounding periods per year is the same as little n in the compound interest formula. And whenever we change the number of compounding periods per year, this will also change the payments per year. Just keep in mind, this does not mean there are regular payments into the account each year, but we can think of this as the number of interest payments per year. Let's look at some examples. You deposit $5,000 in an account earning 3.8% annual interest compounded monthly. How much will you have on the account in 10 years? Round your answer to the nearest cent. So because you deposit $5,000 into the account, the present value is negative 5,000. Capital N is the total number of compounding periods, and since the interest is compounded monthly for 10 years, Capital N is 12 times 10, or 120. There are no regular payments, and therefore payment is zero. I percent is 3.8, the annual interest rate. We are solving for a future value. We'll come back to this. Under compounding periods per year, we enter 12 because the interest is compounded monthly, and this will automatically change payments per year. And now we solve for a future value by clicking Solve FV. And now we know after 10 years, the account balance will be $7,307.03. If by accident, you entered positive 5,000 for present value, and then solve for future value, notice how you will get a negative value, which you may still be able to interpret, but the present value should be negative 5,000, giving us a positive future value. So again, our answer is the account balance will be $7,307.03 in 10 years. Next, how much would you need to deposit in an account now in order to have $5,000 in the account in five years? Assume the account earns 6% annual interest compounded quarterly. Round your answer to the nearest cent. Notice now we are solving for the present value, so we'll leave this alone for right now. Capital N, the total number of compounding periods, is going to be four times five since the interest is compounded quarterly for five years. Four times five gives us the number of quarters in five years. So capital N is 20. Payment stays at zero. I percent is six. The future value is the amount we want after five years, which is positive 5,000. Interest is compounded quarterly, and therefore compounding periods per year is four, which also changes the payments per year, which again we can think of as the number of interest payments per year. And now we need to solve for the present value by clicking PV Solve. We now know you would have to deposit $3,712.35 in order to have $5,000 in five years under these conditions. Now even though the present value is negative, we are going to indicate the amount you need to deposit as a positive amount of $3,712.35. Next, 
you invest $5,000 in an investment account, the interest is compounded monthly at an annual rate of 5.8%. The ending balance will be $7,943.23. How many months will the investment earn interest, or how many months will it take for the balance to reach $7,943.23? So going to our solver, you invest $5,000 and therefore the present value is negative 5,000. Capital N is the number of compounding periods, which in this case is what we are solving for. If we know the total number of compounding periods, we know how many months the investment will earn interest. The payment amount stays at zero. I percent is 5.8. The future value is the ending balance of $7,943.23. Interest is compounded monthly, and therefore we change compounding periods per year to 12, and now we click N Solve. Because the interest is compounded monthly, capital N represents the total number of months, which is 96. So the investment earned interest for 96 months. If we want to convert to years, we would divide by 12, 96 months is equal to eight years. And for our last example, you invest $5,000 in an investment account. The interest is compounded monthly for 10 years. The ending balance will be $11,320.88. What is the annual interest rate? So now we are going to be solving for I percent. You invest $5,000. Present value stays at negative 5,000. Interest is compounded monthly for 10 years and therefore capital N is 12 times 10 or 120. Payment stays at zero. I percent is what we are solving for. We come back to this. The future value is the positive $11,320.88. Interest is compounded monthly, and therefore we leave compounding periods per year at 12, and then we click I percent solve, which gives us 8.2% annual interest. which means if you invest $5,000 in an account that pays 8.2% annual interest compounded monthly for 10 years, the balance will be $11,320.88. I hope you found this helpful.